I'm Josie Long, and you're watching the Friday Night Quarantine show. I, we haven't decided on the name. I'm John Luke Roberts, and this and this is Josie Long. Um, Hello. I can't remember how we did it last time to keep it going. So let's just nip that right in the bud. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm all right actually. Yes, I'm 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 well. I went for a little run today. Um, first time out really properly in a while. That was nice. Did you say you felt like a fawn or a foal? I felt, felt like I find it quite um, stressful actually because it, it seems like about 30% of people really aren't trying to avoid you and so you have to kind of and, uh, yeah it's um it, it is what it is eh? it is what it is um, that's from Soprano is it yeah that, that's where the phrase originated <laughs> I've just realised <laughs> so a while back um, I wrote uh, this is Jenny Donahue from the house band I, I got bored of not being in the show so <laughs> I've lent it I, a while back I wrote a short film and the character was didn't like her life and she would always say it is what it is that's just the thing I made up and then someone else said to her that's from the Sopranos so now whenever I hear someone say it is what it is I just assume it's from Sopranos but yeah now I hear it out loud I'm like how would that it's it's not that no it's not that special a phrase is it? No, I think it's older than that. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 to be fair, the Sopranos is quite old. It is. It was on VHS, if you can remember that. Yeah, ever yeah. was. <laughs> um, Johnny Donahoe, hello. Hello, Luke. It is. Look, you're looking much better than last week. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look Although lovely. I should say it is rather eerie that you're in front of clouds, like you're greeting us from, from heaven. Bath. Oh, I'm like a cartoon when, when anyone dies and they always go, what should we do? Oh, let's just draw it at the pearly gates. And it <laughs> people say, oh, hello, Steve Jobs. It's, um, sorry, we haven't got any apples for you. And then they go, oh, that'll do. And off it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Johnny and Josie, it's interesting. I'd like to work, because your fat mates, obviously, has mm -hmm. romance blossomed under these extreme <laughs> circumstances? Well, we, we had a little fumble um, the other day, <laughs> but I was a bit gassy. So it didn't go far. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> That's well, from the Sopranos. The Sopranos. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I've, have you done, I've done, I did some reminiscing today. Oh, um, did you? Because my my um, husband and I were, were sat uh, reminiscing. So that's what I've done. That's been my uh, stuff. Reminiscing. Oh, lovely. What did you reminisce? I grated some carrot and made a vinaigrette. Yeah. Oh. Yes. I, that's nice. And it, it reminded me of the cakes I used to eat when I was younger. <laughs> uh, just so Proustian, eh? So Proustian. <laughs> uh, carrots and vinaigrette, vinaigrette really reminds me of those, oh, those madeleines I would eat just afterwards. And now all I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so much fun if he just was always seven degrees of separation away from the madeleine. Yeah, like, oh, the madeleine. what's your name? Bethany. What an interesting name. A girl's name, of course. Now that reminds me, <laughs> <laughs> and Bruce, and everyone's just like, listen, he's a great guy. Just try and steer him clear of the Madeleines. I'm trying. I opened up a conversation about Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> Alla recherche does something else to talk about, eh? Am I right? <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> de, um, de, comment comment allez-vous? That's not, that's not talking. What's talking, John? Je suis allé. Oh, bar. No, il, il ne t'allait pas au bar. Il a resté dans la maison. I know everyone in the country has become a grass. You don't need to grass us up because <laughs> he's just speaking French for the fun of it, okay? Yeah, I was just having fun. Don't, I haven't been to the bar. Don't you grass us. I know you're all grasses now. I had um, earlier today, I had half a brie. and then That is true. You can grass him right <laughs> up for that. And then Josie hid the rest of the brie from me. But to be fair to the man, he said to me, Would you hide, hide this? I can't help myself. I can't stop. Yeah. Now I've begun. It's funny with brie. It's it's not really like cheese, is it? Because it's so soft. 
It is like cheese. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I mean, suppose that's true. If you lined up 50 random <laughs> objects and you had the brie... Gravel. Yes, exactly. You probably, if you were to make a chart, put brie in the like cheese section of the chart. It's been it's a great, great show so far. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Um, the other member of the house band is, uh, we can see him watching. He looks a bit irritated that we've not introduced him yet. So please, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for screens, the other, um, uh, the other Baptist, um, uh, Paddy. Jervis. Hey guys, it, there's a bit of a time delay, but I think, I think you keep quoting the Sopranos and I think it's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'd love it if you said, there's a bit of a time delay, a time but, it, delay but it's 2018 here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are and we I all can't imagine things could get worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, look, we've got Javax, we've got, um, we've got, a, you've got a new theme got tune, a you've got a new theme tune for us, haven't you? We've got one Ooh, hell of a show, Luke. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read some poetry later. Ooh, Lena. Ooh, lovely, lovely. Well, um, you guys have got a theme tune for Should we start? Do you want to start with the theme tune? Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if you remember last week. Um, hey, we, Johnny. Dave, hello, darling. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm very well. We spoke earlier. Um, so, so this is fake. But this, it's nice to see you. Yeah, it is always nice. Bit of business, you. isn't it? Bit of business. This yeah. is just, this is just for you guys at home. We're ne- we're getting nothing from saying hello nothing, and how are you to each other. We've we've done it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. We uh, last week. I don't even remember Luke. Um. We debuted the new theme tune. Do you remember it? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. I took my mic off because <laughs> I was being professional. I thought you were still kind of in it, but I realised you're not. So that's the last time I will be discussing anything with you during this segment. Well, we debuted the new theme tune last week, and uh, the way we wrote it, I think uh, you'll remember we discussed, uh, was that I wrote the words and Paddy wrote the music, but for time reasons I had to sing the words to him uh, down the phone before he'd written the music, which really affected what he was able to do with the music. Mm -hmm. So this Mm -hmm. week... He was able to record. Sorry, I'm speaking for you, but you were able to record. Yeah, I did it this afternoon. <clears throat> Done myself proud. And what what's in it? Like, what should we? What should what should people expect? Well, I don't know. I kind of I I looked over at the past episodes of this show, and I thought that one thing that it did scream out was Latin rhythms. Yes, <laughs> it's main. It's mainly Luke. I'll I'll put that out there. But he's got a, a certain. Um, you know, je ne sais quoi, but in, well, that's not very Latin. in that's Spanish. French. No, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so I went for that, I think. Look at him, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've gone, I've, I've gone for that. And, uh, and then to Johnny. Johnny's re-recorded the vocals, this time not on WhatsApp, but on uh, the recorder on his phone. Big step up. And I also changed because um, previously it was the uh, Saturday night Saturday night quarantine show. I've yeah. changed the lyrics to the Friday night quarantine show. So that's uh, basically that's if we good. move day again, that's going to be quite annoying for me. Yeah, because uh, I made a whole I made a whole title scene and everything that goes under the theme, and I have to keep changing the word on it. So should we should we should we cut the dither uh, yeah. and get onto the fun? Um, Let's do are, it. are you ready to hear the uh, you hear the theme, uh, Trent? Um, p- put it on big style. It's the Friday night quarantine show. You watch it on your laptop or maybe your phone. We tell jokes and you laugh at home. Or maybe you don't, but we'll never know. There's Luke, who's grumpy and very moustachy. Josie, who's smiley and lots of laughy. Johnny and the Baptists are the best, we all agree. And two to three guests are very high quality. The best show on the internet, without a doubt. You might as well watch it, you can't go out. It's the Friday night quarantine show. Sponsored by no one, so please send us cash. On the okay, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> oh, wow. that was—it's an adventure, isn't it? It's theatre. It's all <laughs> artifice. Well, it's not theatre, of course. What did you think? The song. 
Mm. Yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a big fan. I think it captures certain parts of the spirit of the show. I don't like all of the lyrics, but okay. generally, I'm, I'm happy with it. Well, uh, what of the lyrics were? I don't like all of your text. jokes. Well, <laughs> 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 you, should come, you should come to see one of my shows. You, 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 you <laughs> the laugh, laugh counts. <laughs> I, what lyrics do yes, you like? Where it says Johnny and the Baptists are the best ones, or something like yeah. that. I, well, that's a direct, direct from from a fan of the show. Um, is that it, it? Was me, but like. it's still, it's still, it's still a quote. But it was Johnny repeating what Queen Elizabeth II said in her address to the nation. That's so, right. No, she said, "I killed Diana, and if I could, I'd have you killed as well, and then I'd laugh about it." I did watch it, so I, I'm going to have to take your word for it, Josie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This makes it seem like I've watched the Queen. <laughs> oh. um, well, you've got to watch her. You've got to watch her because he's sneaking around with those plans and those knives. Ooh, having in the back. Would you like one of these cakes? Oh. <laughs> it's kind of all locked up because the Queen's on a rampage. They're not letting us out just in case. <laughs> Do you know what she did say? And fair play to her in the speech. She said that swans are now classified as geese, so we can all eat them. Yeah. Oh, and nice. then, and then we go out and catch one. And then she said, "It is what it is." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From the Sopranos. <laughs> um, what? Well, look. Um, should, should we introduce yeah. our first act? Yes, please. Yeah, I would love that. Wonderful. Well, um, everybody watching, well, please together or send a clap emoji on Twitter. Oh, and welcome <laughs> to your screens, Glamu. Hi, hello, everybody. Um, first, I'd just like to say what a privilege it is to be able to be performing directly to my fan base today. Um, for a while, I've been doing arenas and stadiums, and that just got so impersonal, just seeing that big black mass of just no lights, no eyes. So to be able to be looking at all of you directly eye for eye in your living rooms today is a real privilege more for you than for me obviously because I don't really care about your lives but obviously you've been following my career for a long long time um so it's a real real privilege being able to do a charity gig and all of you at the Make a Wish Foundation are so so brave so thank you so much for having me today um I would actually like to do a little story about my mother my Iraqi Egyptian Muslim mother, who is completely batshit crazy. Um, like, we haven't had the easiest time growing up. I won't go too much into it, but when she found my gay porn when I was 15 under my bed and there was images of people rooming each other, she passed out in front of me and then said Satan was in the house and didn't look at me for two years, which was iconic. Um, but even though my mom and I have had a very tricky life, my mum is also the greatest love of my life, and in many ways the reason I am a drag queen. She was my gateway into the feminine, my portal into being Glamru, even though Glamru was her biggest nightmare. So let me just give you an example of her queendom. So we were invited to a three-day family wedding in Mykonos, the first party of which was a tropical-themed party. And she decided she needed a tropical-themed hat to give her first place at party one, but we're struggling to find any designers who could make a hat like she envisaged for her party. This is when she called me. Amura, I was wondering, do you know what I might be able to get a fruit with hats and plants on it, you know, for the wedding? I pretended to think hard on the question, even though I basically slept in such attire. Obviously, I couldn't let her know. So I was just like, um, uh, no, obviously, I have no idea where you would get a tropical themed hat. But I don't know, let me think. So the truth is, is I actually have a friend who designs those kinds of hats for drag queens. So I gave her a call. And I was like, look, I'm going to be bringing my mama to your studio. But you have to pretend like you don't know me. And the most crucial thing is that you have to pretend like you don't know I do drag because my mom doesn't know I do drag even though she clearly does know I do drag, which is why she's called me about this hat anyway. So we arrive at my friend's studio, very trippy experience. All around me were, ha were hats that I'd humped the floor in in many a drag show. And right in front of me was my mother dressing up as me, dressing up as her, very trippy, very amour de 
Anyway, she decides to buy a hat that's about as big as a human adult and that I had definitely once used in some kind of faux fisting sketch. So that was kind of cute. Anyway, we then go to Heathrow to get our EasyJet flight to Mykonos. But my mum not really getting that EasyJet was a sort of on a, bu- on a budget thing. She arrived with four suitcases, one for every outfit and then one for the hat altogether. And so was completely baffled when they were charging her through the roof to basically get on the plane. And so screamed at the top of her lungs in Heathrow in front of all the disgruntled British passengers behind her. This is not easy, Jet. This is difficult, Jet. What a queen. Um, honestly, like, and this is the woman who is surprised I do anal for a living. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, another instance of when I really, really realized that she was proper drag spiration was actually at another wedding. It was a much more serious Muslim wedding. So she got me this like really straight jacket type shirt, which I had to wear. Anyway, when I went home to shower before the wedding, I applied this tattoo brightening soap to my unicorn that I've got tattooed here in my chest. I won't show you my nipple because you didn't pay enough. Anyway, I put that soap on. And then when I left the house, I realized that there was like a little bit of a stain on the shirt, but it was so, so tiny that like, I didn't think she would notice. Anyway, mama's reaction deserved an Oscar nomination. Amru, what is that? We cannot show our faces with that. Visible mum. And anyway, they've already think we're all damned because I practice anal and wear heels for a living. Anyway, she collapsed on the couch and she was breathing really deeply. She was wearing this flowing black dress held together by a delicate metal circle frame around her neck. This is what she said next. This is the last thing I need today. Of all days, today you do this. Do you know what I have been through today? And then I was like, fuck, maybe it's serious. And this dirty shirt is the final thing that pushed her over the edge. And then she said, this Valentino dress I'm wearing, it broke this morning. The metal neck fell apart. I had no other designer dresses that everyone hasn't already seen. So this was very, very serious. I was at my wit's end. My parents sometimes like to throw in a British saying to show that they belong here too. And I wouldn't have been able to go tonight if I haven't had found a welder to fix my dress for me. When she said that, I felt a surge of euphoria. Why are you smiling like that? My mother asked, apparently offended that I didn't empathize with the gravity of what she had been through. Are you telling me that you had to locate a welder to fix you into a designer dress so that you could show your face at this wedding? Yes, Amru, it was very stressful. And now you come wearing a shirt that will make you look like an orphan. A welder, a welder. Even the most avant-garde, exciting drag queens I know have never done anything as unashamedly drag as incorporating welding into their costume. The only thing I could respond with was, oh, mama, I love you. I gave her a hug to which she was half resistant, no doubt, no doubt fearing that I might render the welder's hard work null and void. Love you, mama. And thank you to my fans. Thank you so much. You really have been on a long, long journey with me. And, and, you know, my millions wouldn't have come here without your dedicated love and support. So thank you so much. And I'm thinking of you in a kind of anonymous way because I don't know who any of you are. Thank you so much. How do I get off this thing now? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. What do I do now? You can... You can just... You can... Um... Uh, you can click on the little camera and click on the little microphone and both should you may the- sit quietly <laughs> until the end of the show. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank Absolutely you. beautiful. Oh, thanks. Um, love and, you guys. Um, just to write, oh. we should, um, we should <laughs> do some of the admin, do some of the admin. Yes. There's all the acts on tonight, obviously. We uh, and uh, There's no uh, uh, theatre anymore. Uh, Career doesn't exist. Yes, uh, it, when t- I look at my diary, I just laugh because there's all these months and months of all these bookings, and it's just nothing. Today, a- today I deleted from my diary, from my diary, Oslo, oh. which was I was uh, four gigs booked in Oslo, and um, that's look at May. Look at all those gigs for May gone. So you can okay. go about our plight um, to <laughs> cosmicshambles.com forward slash stay at home and there's a tip jar then and and that goes to support all the acts over the week and the venues which have lost their 
business. Um, yeah. That's yeah. And yeah. We'll, there's loads of well, we'll we'll do. We'll, there's lots of exciting guests on your shows next week, Josie, which we can oh, go yeah. about later in the show. Um, yeah, on um, mon- yeah, on Monday we've got Stuart Lee for a special ooh. Easter morning treat. I presume he's going to be doing some sacrilege. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Um, other than that, oh, we've just got all kinds of wonderful people coming up. And also we've had some absolutely brilliant people on already, and they're all up. You can go to cosmicshackles.com. You can find them via the YouTube. You can go wherever you fancy um, and catch up with them. Uh, yeah so please do it's been really really it's been weirdly a lifeline for me <laughs> to do it <laughs> more than anything else <laughs> um, um, c- can I just say um, uh, we, we've had uh, I've been uh, I've been following obviously social media oh, yeah. uh, and we've had some, well, uh, my own whatsapp feed and uh, we've had some more comments about the show mm-hmm. yes. again my sister is also enjoying this remember she enjoyed this ep- last week's episode yes She's also enjoying this one. So that's 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 two weeks in a row now where she's quite pleased. That's good. Would you how would you in terms of how easy or difficult to please she is? I don't think she's a pushover. No. Oh no. No, no she's got opinions. Mm. Yep. My uh, my nephew got in touch to say that uh, the clarity of my camera is better this week. <laughs> so... <laughs> and uh, and my uncle has just texted me, Josie's such a natural. Oh, that's, oh nice. that's nice. There you go. That's, <laughs> Thank that's, you, Uncle Jervis. High oh. praise. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit hurt by a mission. Well, I mean, he he. Okay, he also What's said, Brian "Blessed what? come as." <laughs> but I was, uh, <laughs> I, that, I was, I was oh, censoring that one for, for you. Is that in reference to to Luke? I think that I think I think that's in reference to to Jonathan Donahoe. Oh, oh, oh right. I was going to say. Oh. I was going to say. It's nice. I was I briefly thought it was lovely to hear that, um, that that there was a Brian Breast Blessed reference that was named at me. Yeah, but, uh, but it was. No, no but it was. was. Um, Luke, I'm sure that now that they've heard this, there's going to be a barrage of comments about you. So I'll uh, oh, I'll update uh, next time you tune in. Very um, Josie, it's time for your. Hooray! Hooray! Finally, my little spot to perform. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I miss the stage so much. I miss the stage. I miss the stage. Um, it's really um also what's funny is the screen has just become just paddy for me so it's like i'm only performing to paddy at the moment hi paddy hope you enjoy this um the uh, a positive thing that i can think of uh coming out of this so um it's very difficult i'm finding it very hard to be creative because quite a lot of what i like to write stand-up wise is me going this is what i think about the world and the conclusions i've drawn about it and this is the way i think we should all go forwards and at the moment this is what i think about the world (laughs) and this is what i think we should do (laughs) so it's difficult Uh, but i do think that a, a real good thing that is going to come out of this pandemic is that nobody is going to be able to say that comedians are brave anymore and I think that's very important if you're a comedian people come up to you and they're like you're so brave I couldn't do what you do and I feel like we're we're really being shown up by people who are genuinely brave and heroic and um fair play to it a uh, long way it continue uh, all I do at the moment is I have three hobbies uh, the main one is childcare. Uh, that one it's it's a funny one because it's absolutely non-negotiable and it takes up my entire life. Then what I like to do is I like to play people from around the world on chess.com. I love it so much. I play people from every nation at random and I lose to all of them. And it's a joy. And the only people I don't lose to are people from the United Kingdom and the United States. Because whenever they come on, I get so desperate to beat them. And I don't know why. And I worry it says something dangerous about my character. Um, but also, they have a, um automated kind of AI system that checks and reviews your um, game after you finish. And it gives you little summaries. And the summaries are so well written. I started to just believe that the chess AI knows me and cares about my chess playing. Like today, I won one and it said, that was a real battle, but you earned the win. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, what's happened is that somebody has now texted on the Skype text, get out of the fridge, Johnny. And I, I think it's completely fair. I'm trying to find the brie. <laughs> we can all see him. He's trying to get that brie. He'll never find it. I've hidden it where he'll never find it. <laughs> In the salad drawer. No, he loves he loves salad. We all love salad. He's, he's a very, it's just a bon, bon vivant. Is the, is the problem um uh this is what i've done is this week i've there's been a lot of jokes i've wanted to make but i've worried about the taste and worried too because we do seem to be a generation a, a, a nation who all proudly voted tory but now who would be thrilled to participate in the stasi and so what i've got is this is um paulette the risque giraffe um, how are you, Paulette? Oh, very well. And um, Paulette, I believe you've got some things, some jokes that you wanted to make that I personally am not making. And therefore, if anyone watching were to write about this or think about it, they would know that it wasn't me making them. Oh, yes, I am very thrilled to be doing these jokes. So Boris Johnson has pulled through, which is great, because now we can all go back to wanting him to fuck off and die. <laughs> Paulette, that's a bit rough. It's not you saying it, Josie. It's Paulette, the risque giraffe. Thank fuck this isn't a war, because I actually do love the NHS, whereas if I was having to applaud our brave troops, I would die of bile. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Paulette, you've got your opinions, and I've got mine, which are distinctly different. Um, Paulette, um... How do you, uh, what other news have you got? Well, in other news, the Sun newspaper is uh, struggling for money. I say, good! <laughs> well, that's not exactly risque. No, it's not. But also I found out that Hive of Transphobia, Mum's Net is struggling for money. Listen, Paulette, on your head be it. Those people are obsessive. I don't want to talk about them. Well, it's a good thing you're not. So basically what they've been asking their subscribers to do is they've been asking them to take out a premium subscription. But unfortunately the subscribers have then said... I am not going to take out a premium subscription until I can use hate speech. So they're really in a bit of a pickle. Well, thank you very much for that, Paulette. It was a lovely, uh, a lovely um, set, which I think descended somewhat into polemic and lost the thread of jokes. But uh, it's not everyone's a professional. Not everyone has the light touch that we would hope for. Um, my joyful event today as well is that a, I found out that a private plane... Uh, was en route to Marseille from this country and on it were some men in their 40s and 50s and some women in their 20s who were hoping to go on holiday to Cannes. Um, this was written in The Guardian and uh, somebody rightly pointed out that the detail in it is so deliberately pointed and arch and I love the fact that whoever was reporting this for The Guardian was like, people need a bit of intrigue in their life. Let's make sure people get the messages. Um, and anyway, I... I couldn't believe this piece of news because it is so rare that anyone from the, the real, real top level of wealth in this country has to face any consequences. Um, and so what I thought I would do is put on a play of what I think must have happened when the plane arrived. Um, this is the older man with his young girlfriend there. And they've just arrived. They've hello, bonjour. Uh, hello, yes. Which Excuse me, what? Someone on France is going to be playing on France. No. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm glad I have to turn you and your, uh, this young lady that you presumably uh, don't know of. Uh, well, uh, let's not speculate. My name isn't Paulette, it's Sophie. Uh, I presume. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> basically, A, A, I'm losing my mind, but B, the sweet, sweet taste of justice. Mm. I hope that we get to taste more and more of it in the rest of our lives. Although I do feel that, sadly, once this is all over, I don't imagine the ruling classes will suddenly say, hey, I've had a change of heart. I would like less money. But we'll see. Um, I hope that was all right. I'm sorry if I seem strange and my energy seems odd. Um, yeah, I um, 
Oh, I had a joke about the fact that I um, am deeply, deeply worried about my precarious position in this world and that even though she went to an elite uh, university, I still feel distinctly uh, terrified. And even though people love to say that I live in an ivory, ter- ivory tower, I do not I did receive an email today from Ocado saying that I have qualified for um, a delivery once a week. So in some ways, I am entrenched in the middle class. Uh, None of that was good enough or jokes. Back to you in the studio, Luke. Hooray! Hello. (laughs) The delay, the delay. (laughs) I thought it was very good. (laughs) But you you were so bored you went to the fridge for Brie. No, I went, I went, I went to the fridge to find appropriate snacks so I could enjoy it better, like a film, like a movie at the cinema. Uh, (laughs) Go see a movie at the cinema. A movie at the cinema. <laughs> Go to the cinema. <laughs> I, I, I see a talkie. I, the, for the next, for my next bit, Josie, I need to have a slightly more um, aloof persona. So I'm going to go off camera, and then you introduce me again. Yeah, of course. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Put your phone. To, I, she just, she I just, just received an update from his sister. And what, what did she? Oh wait, hang on. She's texting yeah. you as well now. Everyone watching, it's my absolute delight to introduce to you a very famous and well-beloved poet who I will be introducing by name. I think that's the correct thing to do. Uh, Please do not welcome, ladies and gentlemen, John Luke Roberts. It's John Luke Roberts, and I have really bored. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. I thought it would be good to introduce a slightly more serious tone at this point um, because it's difficult times for us all and humour does have its place. Obviously, we need a bit of escapism, a bit of lightness. But um, I think it's it, we need to find time where we can just feel our emotions um, cry, if you want to. And I find, personally, poetry um, helps me do that. And there's a poem I'd like to read to you now, um, which I have here. So um, this is... This is uh, This poem, I think, is very apposite for our times. Home is so sad by Philip Larkin. Home is so sad by Philip Larkin. Home is so sad by Philip Larkin. Home by Philip Locke. Home is so sad by Philip Locke. Home is so sad. It stays as it was left. By Philip Locke. <coughs> Home is so sad. It stays as it was left. Shaped to the comfort of the last to go as if to win them back. Instead, bereft of anyone to please by Philip Larkin. Home is so sad. It stays as it was left, shaped to the comfort of the last to go by Philip Larkin. Home is so sad by Philip Larkin. Home by Philip Larkin. Home is so sad. It stays as it was left, shaped to the comfort of the last to go, as if to win them back. Instead, bereft of anyone to please, it withers so, having no heart to put aside the theft, turn again to what it started as, a joyous shot at how things ought to be, long fallen wide. By Philip Larkin. 
<laughs> um, uh, Luke, uh, I, how much do, do you want to? Do you want to just? Well, you could let me start. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> of course, of course, as you were. Sorry, as you were. Oh, so, uh, okay. Yes, sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, taking out. Um, okay. <clears throat> Home is so sad by Philip Lark. Okay, it's just, um, you don't seem to be... Oh, no, sorry, please, please, as you were. I, mean, I, I just say the title and then you interrupt me, but I don't know what I'm meant to do. No, as you were, please. <laughs> Home is so sad. It stays as it was left. Shaped to the comfort of the last to go by Philip Larkin. Okay, it's just you did read a, quite a lot more than that one, and then you seem to be to be. It's almost like you're. It's, it's getting worse as opposed to better. Are you a poet? I don't know. I, it seems like you shouldn't necessarily be commenting on on something you don't know about. Well, I have a degree in English language and literature Class? from Oxbridge University. Uh, uh, arts and crafts. You see, home is so sad. I feel it. Actually, no, I can't work it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to have had to cut that short. No, I fully appreciate you, um, Um Now, <laughs> God, he's gone. He's, he's gone. officially left the show. He's left the show. Would you? <laughs> oh, he's back on the show. John Luke Roberts there. Yes, Josie gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you disturbed me. <laughs> I'm a Marxist nutter, apparently, according to uh, George Osborne, the architect of austerity responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths. A <laughs> hundred thousand deaths. Sorry, Would you only have the... <laughs> I want to see Beginner's Guide. When did George Osborne call you a Marxist nutter? He, uh, he described the outgoing Labour administration as Marxist nutters and then he said how glad he was for the new administration because for the past five years there had been no alternative and no opposition and it's a hilarious joke uh, in the face of everyone who obviously saw for the first time obviously saw for the first time in their life some form of alternative um, come on come on <laughs> back to comedy please Luke why don't you bloody read this poem <laughs> <laughs> I've got something to say. All I wanted was to go on holiday with my a holiday with my age appropriate boyfriend, and I was turned away just for not being French. Hello. <laughs> okay, Luke. What's happening now? Got a wonderful <laughs> headliner act. Yes, and we're so excited. We're so thrilled. So um, thrilled. Um. Actress, uh, been on the stage a lot. Um, really wonderful, a uh, real delight to have her here. Please uh, put your hands together and welcome to your screens, um, Anna Man. Hello, hello, my dark fuck. Am I on? Yes, <laughs> no. Am I lit? Yeah. I look like the devil. I was just staring at myself and I think I look like the actual devil. Fuck, what a role that would be to play the devil, to play Satan to play Lucifer or any of his names. Fuck what I wouldn't give for that chance. The way you play the devil is you'll stare like this and you'll go, is it safe? I was taught that by a mask man called Bill. Hello, um, lovely to not see you. I can't see you, but I can feel. I sort of get this, this pain sense coming from all of Britain, if not the world, because Josie earlier, she said, actors, comedians, performers, we're not that brave. I'm afraid you're wrong. We are amongst the bravest people on the planet because we feel everything. And I can feel your anticipation as you're watching me now. You know, what's going to happen? What's she going to do? Have we got the right show, Margaret? I love that. Yes, you have, Margaret. Fucking Margaret. Um, it's lovely to be here. I'm Anna Mann. When I say here, I'm just in my room. I'm Anna Mann, uh, actress, singer, barber, briefly, in the 80s. Who wasn't? siren of the stage and screen. I've been in everything, my darlings. I've been cut from most things. Um, I was in the original, original, original version, sort of the read-through of The Lion King. 
Um, I played the elephant's fanny. It had to be taken out. It was a children's show, but a very visceral role. Um, and not as easy as it sounds. I had to study elephant's fannies for a long time. Um, I'd often walk back and forth at the zoo just trying to get a little extra look, you know, and then try and copy it with my body. Also, I appeared in... What else have I been in, darlings? Anyone? Anyone? What else have I been in? Oh, very famous film recently. Started life as a little thing called Dead Island. Then they changed it to Island of the Dead. Then it became uh, everyone on this island is dead. Then it became I'm dead of you. Let's get off the island. Till finally they settled on um, Downton Abbey the movie, where sadly I ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, I, I mean, I drank a whole bottle of gin. I was on the cutting room floor. Then they cut me out the movie. But um, Josie's in the fridge now. I can see her. What's she getting? What's she getting, Johnny? Fuck. That fridge has seen some action, and I love it. I'm eating everything, everything I can get my hands on. Sue Clinch, um, my best friend, she's not well, bless her, she's not well. She started to get a little bit paranoid. Um, she has. She's still working. She said, oh, no. she thinks everyone's trying to dress like her. She said, oh, no, I think everyone's trying to dress like me. I said, no, darling, that's just because you work in Morrison's. It's a uniform. She doesn't get it, you see. She's not well. Um, she's not well at all. The other day we were lying in bed um, one afternoon because I've spent a lot of this quarantine in bed. I don't know about you, darlings, but it's a great opportunity to sleep. Um, me and Sue were lying there. Both of us wrapped around a sheesh, me the pipe, she the kebab. She's not well. Um, and she turns around and she goes, hopefully this lockdown's going to end. I don't think it's going to end. I said, darling, it's going to end. It's going to end. Even if I have to kill you first, it will end. Um, but no, she's doing all right. We're playing a lot of hopscotch. Um, there's not enough room. It's a very small flat. It's only, there's only one room and a pantry. So I'm in the room, and in the pantry is Sue, mother, and Mahogany, my daughter. Um, she's lovely Mahogany. Very woke, which I love. Don't get me wrong. Fuck, Josie, I'm frighteningly woke. I really am. I'm so woke I can hardly sleep. I'm often lying in bed going, fuck, should I have called that man a Native American or not? I don't know. I mean, in this case, no, he was from Kinshasa. But, um, no, but she's very, she won't even let me do my hacker warm-up in the mornings. It's getting very frustrating. I said, I can do it. It's culturally appropriate. Anyway, um, no, but I've been very busy last year until this lockdown happened. I did a lovely short film a uh, horror flick called Randy Man 2. Anyone? Little ripple of recognition, Johnny. Um, say his name five times, and a really Randy Man jumps out of the mirror and chases you around the room. It wasn't great. Very good idea. Derivative, but strong. Um, and I appeared in the low-budget disaster flick, Flash in the Pan, all about a very small but easily contained fire. Lot of suspense. Fuck, there was a lot of suspense there. Jesus a lot of suspense, you know, a lot of, a lot of shots of this pan and then people chatting in a kitchen and then back to the pan and you're like, fuck, something's going to happen. But when it did, it was just sort of, you know. I said, am I getting paid for this? They said, well, you can have whatever's left in the pan, which is better than a kick in the teeth, um, which is the other film I did this year, a kick in the teeth, gritty crime flick starring uh, Danny Dyer and the foot of Sean Bean. He said, uh, I don't want to be in your film. Give me 12 grand, you can have my foot. And I thought, that's a lot of money, you know, darling, for a foot. But when you saw it in action, you were like, fuck, all right, that's where the money's gone. You know, very long and very northern. Um, it was a very gritty, exciting, really cutthroat film, and it ended where we all ate a pedo. But too much, too much. Won't say that again. But no, a lot of Shakespeare recently. Love you, Bill, if you're up there listening. He's not up there. I mean, you know, heaven. Um, I'm lolling at this, but you can't hear because my mic's off. I hope that's not the audience. Um, no, but love Bill. I really do. I really do. I love Bill. 500 years he's been dead. Feels like yesterday, doesn't it? So sad. Um, so soon. But no, Bill, 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 Bill Shakes, as they call him in Germany. No, Bill was a very talented man. Wrote some wonderful plays, and I've done a lot of them. Um, modern versions, often, directed by my late-ish husband, not quite there, bless him, uh, Sir Peter Runway. Awful man, very small, really tiny, which isn't why he's awful, 
I don't judge people on their height. I judge people on their character and their weight, I'm afraid. I'm awful for that. But no, <laughs> no I don't. Of course I don't. Um, but no, he was a very small man and very vicious, you know, very vicious with a butterfly knife. If you got a scene wrong, fuck. You remember them. You remember you remember getting them, darlings, when we went on those um, trips to France, when we were, you know, slit your ear to ear. He really would. So you look, but I tell you what, you learn your fucking lines. You learn your lines. Anyway, he did a modern version of The Tempest. Very brave. Sorry, Josie, but achingly brave. Um, what he did to make it modern, because it's so important for modern, you know, to make a good modern play. We did a wonderful modern play um, for, for the youth in um, Hackney, I think it was, of Julius Caesar. And what they really did there, 100% to make it really sort of, you know, modern for the, for the young people to get it. So what they did was the J was an at, the U was upside down, L was a three, I was, was just an I, hyphen us, and then Caesar was just an emoticon of someone crying. Um, wonderful, really, really, I think really made a point, you know, really tried to get it to the youth um, in Hackney. Unfortunately, everyone was white and over 50, but still, it was very powerful. Um, but no, what we did was The Tempest, which was very clever, because he tried to bring it into modern audiences, so it made sense. You know, it wasn't just words you don't know in an order that doesn't mean anything. He, rather than set it on a desert island, he set it in an office in Leicester. And rather than make it about, um, you know, whatever that play's about, he made it about sexual harassment in the workplace, the temp pest, you see. That's actually very clever. That, no, that was actually very clever. Didn't make sense, not what the play's about. Everybody left. Um, I wanted to play lovely Miranda, but Sir Peter cast me as Caliban the Beast Man. I said, Sir Peter, I don't want to spend six weeks in makeup, darling. He said, well, I didn't think you need any. Fuck. I was spitting blood. I mean, I had pneumonia. But we got into a huge fight. That's not a good joke for now, is it? We got in a huge fight, or a great joke, very, very now. Got in a huge fight in the dressing room, you know, tea and biscuits flying everywhere. Someone knocked over an urn. Um, and then we just started fucking. But, and some of the actors in the room were very upset, and one of them actually complained. But what else have I been in? That, I've done my time three times over already, I think. But no, I did a version of Othello, very modern version of Othello, which rather than be about, you know, a black Venetian general struggling against racism, it was about a man in a call centre with a lisp. You know, oh, Othello! Very clever. Very cl Again, not what the play's about, so it didn't make any sense. Um, really, I mean, he needs to stop just doing something with the title. He needs to read the rest of the play. As I screamed at him every rehearsal, but he wouldn't have it, Sir Peter. He wouldn't have it. You know, so, yes, we're, we're facing difficult times at the minute, and I think a lot of people can get very depressed. Depression is a real illness. It really is. I did a show all about it. They told me not to do it right? You're too old, Anna. You don't know what you're talking about. Stick to what you're good at, sleeping and crying. Somebody's going to get hurt. It'll be Aliens the Musical all over again. Probably feeling a little ripple of recognition there. No one in space can hear me scream, but boy, can they hear me sing. You remember? He's no good for you, says mommy. Put a creature in your tummy. He's up to no good. He's got acid for blood, but I can't help it if I love him. Close the first night. Um, no, honestly, they were handing out P45s during the interval. But no, I had to do my show. I really did, because it's so important. You know, it's so important. I went to, um, you know, when I came to accept I was suffering depression and it's pissy little sister anxiety, I went straight to the NHS, right? And surprise, surprise, we can't help you with that. And yeah, they were a dentist, but still. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love the NHS, all right, Piers, back off. Vive la NHS. What's French for NHS, anyone? Le, le NHS. But never gets to laugh that. And I don't know if it did then. And that, I, I love that. That's what I love about this. What I love is I'll never know. Only let me know if you really enjoyed it. But what was I talking about? Fuck. Yes, yeah, so, so I had that. And I think a lot of depression starts in childhood. I really do. I grew up in a very difficult household. Mum was a real matriarch, you know, ruled the house with an iron fist and a gammy leg. 
dad, lovely man, again, very small, really small, honestly, tiny, really barely visible to the naked eye. Um, when they got in fights, mum would kick him and just, Wah! just awful, awful to watch. Very creative, played the guitar like no one else, played it like a flute, it sounded terrible. Um, but in, she was awful, she really was, mother. She's still around, she's stuck with me here. She's in the, um, in the pantry right now, scoffing her face off on whatever she can eat. She can open most cans with her teeth. But well, she does both sides and then just <laughs> or shoots it into someone else's mouth. She's not well. They're all mad. I'm the, I feel like I'm the only same one here. I really do. Five of us. There's me, Mahogany, my daughter, Lessa. Um, awful. Mother, really awful. Sue Clinch, monster. My only help is little Lemon, my granddaughter. Bless her. And even she's sort of getting on my tits. But, no, you know what I mean. I think, I think we've all had enough of this. Do you know what I mean? Yes, we get it. We get it. It's wonderful. It's brilliant. Oh, look, you can do its hair. It's starlight glimmer. Fuck, I don't care. Although, that said, end of season three, starlight glimmer. I'm talking about My Little Pony now. Starlight Glimmer starts off as a friend, turns into a traitor, then becomes a friend again. It's actually very gripping. Um, so, you know, it's very easy to get down and depressed. It really is. Mum, I won't go on about mum. You might have read the autobiography, Mummy Wouldn't Buy Me a Horse. Um, and then, of course, the sequel, Mummy Did Buy Me a Horse, but then she shot it. The point is, she's awful. She really is. I used to think she was bipolar, but I've decided she's just polar. She's just horrible. Um... And into that household came Anna Mann. I didn't have many friends. Um, in fact, I had none. The only person I could talk to was a little dog called Cassie. Um, we should probably wrap up so the stream doesn't go down. Fuck off, John Luke Roberts. Fuck off. I've known you 12 years or something, and I still don't know whether to call you John Luke or John Luke, so you can fuck off because you change it every week. And it's... No, that was too much. I'm sorry. He's actually crying now. I'm so sorry. If you can't see what I can see, Paddy and Johnny and Josie still love you lots. Thanks, Pads. Thanks, kid. You're great. You're great. Love your music. I've got enough. So, I am the only professional here. Wow. Is that based on that last thing you did? No. Good. Um... No, it was. No, actually, Josie, that was incredibly brave. That really was. I mean, you wouldn't do it if you could see people's faces, I'll tell you that. But what? No, it was very good, actually. Shut up. Shall I wrap up? So what I would like to say before I go, darlings, whatever happens over the next few months, it's going to be tough, right? We're all in this together. We're not. We're all millions of miles away from each other. But we're in it together in a sort of not really way. But we can pretend we are. And that's what acting is. And whatever happens, you mustn't regret, okay? As the song goes, no, je regrette, don't regret. Um, I love you. You're visceral, you're real. Tip, hi. Good night. <laughs> Anna Man. Oh, it was quite uh, yeah. <laughs> Anna Man. <laughs> that was lovely. That was really wonderful. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, what a show. What a show. What a show. Uh, what a show. We should and finish we with a song. Oh. Yes. Okay. We should have a quick short song. Nobody does. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, do we finish with a quick song? song? Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. Uh, 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 We've done the album. Uh, uh, you, you, you can do you like. Do you like. Do you and then. We'll be back next Friday. Next Friday is my birthday. She's going to be 23. 23 years young. And because I age. Backwards and then forwards and then backwards. So it's complicated to have to work out how it's going. So what else is there, Josie? Who's on the show next week in the mornings? You've got Stuart Lee and other people. And sure, we've got all kinds of people. Go to cosmicshambles.com slash stay at home. Have a look. Join us. It's a really lovely way to uh, start the day. Or if you have young children, <laughs> punctuate the middle of the day at 10am. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great guests on next week. Uh, the snooker player, 
Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's not on, but is, I do like him. Uh, the uh, the golfer, Saron Golf. He's not on because he doesn't exist. Uh, the uh, Milton Keynes Don's entire football squad. I'm not on because they're splitters. And if I was going to have one of them on, I would have AK, AFC Wimbledon. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, everyone's favourite Formula One racing driver, Chris Addison. <laughs> oh, he is on. He's, he's now seen the list. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Addison is on, which is fantastic. And Beck Hill. And also Tanita Tickerem. Yep. It's going to be great. It'll be a lovely week. Uh, uh, Nigel Mansell is going to be on. not on. Um, Sting is going to be in the studio doing a couple of his songs. <laughs> Unfortunately, we will not be connected to that studio. <laughs> Let's go to the house band now. Um, John Luke, did you mind of improv between me and Johnny? What do you think of that? I thought it was, uh, it was perfect. It was absolutely, it was very good. <laughs> right, to finish tonight's show, we're going to do a little, song, do a little song for you. I thought we'd uh, finish with something sexy because uh -huh. it's about to be. Yeah, your Paddy's drinking. Um, we thought we'd do something a bit sexy for you all because, um, you know, you're stuck at home, maybe with a loved one. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, uh, we all need a good uh, bang. So, uh, this song is um, mine and Paddy's sexy song. Uh, and it, it, it's, uh, it's a very sexy number that we like mm -hmm. to do every time we make sex. Um, and uh, Paddy, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. You you happy with the time delay? Uh, I, I I am delighted with the fact that there will be a time delay. Oh great! Okay, so one, two, three. Ooh, that's nice. A little, little bit loud, but um, maybe once again. Yeah, there we go. That's lovely. Oh, it's fun. Uh, this song is called "The Ten Steps to Making Love." <laughs> and it's all ten things I like to do before I make love. And it's the ten steps to making love. Are you ready, Paddy? Here we go, here we go, here we go, step ten. I put a record on. Step nine. I take off my clothes. Step eight. We have intercourse. Step seven. Wait, sorry, can I, sorry, no, wait, stop, sorry. Um, it's called the three steps. Oh, it's, it's called the three steps to making three love. Three steps, three just, steps to making love. Just three. Shit. Sorry, man. <sighs> well. Well, that's us out, I guess. That's, yeah, uh, that's... That's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to tip. Um, yep. <laughs> um, Smash that bell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not hosts. We don't know. We don't know how to end the show. We're not natural hosts. Don't worry. I love the limelight. I've had a third of a glass of wine, but I've got a baby. <laughs> so that I have two bottles of wine. <laughs> I've, I've really enjoyed the show our guests were fantastic Glamry, you were amazing uh, Anna Mann aka Colin you are amazing what a genius hi <laughs> and that can you